Hi everyone, this is Johnny O Knows, and I'm playing Astroneer, and in this Let's Learn episode, I'm going to go over all of the technology that you can unlock in the game using the research system. I'm going to go into detail on each one, and how they work, and what I use them for. The first two technologies can be built on your backpack. The first one is power cells, the second one are filters. Power cells and filters are basically a, another way to get at your really important resources, which are, which is air and power. Now, what these do is that they're basically temporary boosts for these two particular resources. And the great thing about it is that it only uses compound, so you don't actually have to carry air or power along with you filling up your inventory. All you need is maybe a couple compound in case you run into trouble. So let's go ahead and just kind of run out, run out of the perimeter here. Start running out of air. And if I ever get into a situation where I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm going to make it. I'm going to go ahead and build myself some filters. And then boom, my air supply goes up. You can tell how much is being used from the filters by these little circles here. So one has already been used. And I can run around and do whatever I want for a pretty good amount of time. I think it adds another like two to four minutes to your air supply. So you're really in a good spot. If you happen to find yourself out, um, maybe like stuck in a hole or um, away from your vehicle or your base or any of the tethers, you're going to want to build yourself a uh, set of power cells to give you a boost to your power. So let's see how much we can mine with just this alone. So look at that, we'd already be out of power at this point. So with this little power cell, you're able to do a lot more than you would if you didn't have one. And I think that would have like maybe replaced maybe three or four slots worth of, um, of power if you had it in your inventory. And all this time, the air filter is still going. Looks like it's just about to run out, though. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. And But I still have a full tank of air to be able to get home. So both of these items are really useful, um, mostly because of the fact that they only take compound. And the other thing is, is that they, it doesn't take up that much inventory space. So it's basically replacing maybe two or three slots worth of whatever resource you're going to need. The next two technologies are base modules. So to build them, you need to build yourself an empty base module and then select them from the list. So the first one is the trade platform. And the second one is the fuel condenser. The fuel condenser is a relatively easy to use module where all you have to do is make sure it's powered and then click the buttons here and you're going to get yourself a container full of hydrazine, which can be used for fueling up your spaceship. There we go. So that's, that's really all it is. The next one here is called the trade platform. Now the trade platform is a pretty powerful tool, almost too powerful for the game in the in its current state. Uh, if you couple it with the fuel condenser, you can actually take a resource that basically just costs you power, which is nothing when you have everything set up properly, um, and then just use it to buy other materials with it. So we're gonna use hydrazine just because I've got a lot of it in my inventory and um, and it's easily accessible here. So I put I put four hydrazine onto this tray platform. You can put up to eight resources if you wish. But as you cycle through the different resources that you're wishing to buy with the resources that you're giving, you, you can see the price differential between the different items. So if we start at the very bottom, which are the very common um, the common resources like compound, resin, and organic, you can see that I'm getting two of these per gas that I'm putting in. As we get to the unprocessed metals, you can see that's a one-to-one -one ratio. For the processed metals, as well as itself and lithium, you're getting a one-to-one -one ratio. And then for the expensive resources like coal and titanium, you're getting a four to one four gas for one titanium. So right there, you can kind of see what the prices are for each one. So if I take this gas off 
and I throw in a titanium, which is seemingly the most expensive resource, you can see I'm getting uh, four to one for, I'm getting four compounds for one titanium. So that that's what really makes uh, doing those research nodes or research items, even though you might have researched them already, get a bunch of titanium and you can easily whip, your, whip up yourself uh, a group of eight compounds. If you happen to put too much into the trade station, you're not going to get that much back because it's not going to be able to process it. So as you can see, as I went over the threshold of eight, it went down to four, which means that it's going to give, it's going to take what it can and then replace what it can based off the space. So let's go ahead and show you that. Once you're done with your selection, you hit this button here. Can't believe we're using titanium for some compounds, but that's all right. You go ahead and click the button and away your little satellite goes. All you got to do now is just wait for, I think it's like 30 seconds to a minute for the thing to come back down with the resources that you put in it. All right, here she comes back. Let's see what we got. As you can see, it didn't take one of the hydrazine as well as it didn't take the titanium, but it did give me the four compounds that it promised. So you can use this to get at resources that may not be readily available to you, whether or not you've either mined out the whole area or you're on a planet that has very little resources to begin with. I think that's why they built it in this fashion so that you can get at anything as long as you can get to something. So it's a very powerful tool. Like I said, it, it feels almost too powerful where once you have one of these set up and maybe you have a fuel condenser, you really don't have to go and scavenge anymore. So you can pick or choose whether or not you want to use this in this early stage of the game. But a very powerful tool. The next set of technology that you can unlock can be built at the printer. The first one is the habitat. Next one is the winch. And the last one is called the drill head. The habitat acts as a central node for a new base. So this allows you to build a new base on either the same planet that you're on or on another planet. I tend to take one with me on my spaceship so that I can just make a new base really quickly. So all you have to do is place it on the ground, hit this button, and it will start a new central node for you to be able to build a base. Very useful. The drill head can be attached to either the front or back of your vehicle or onto a crane. Uh, the drill head can be used by just holding down left click. Now attached to the front of your vehicle, I haven't really found a really good use for this yet. It does pick up some resources, but it doesn't do it all that well. Like, picking up compound takes about, like, ten times longer than it would if you just use your tool. So I found that the drill head is mostly used for the crane, in conjunction with the crane, so you can do some pinpoint accuracy drilling, as well as mining any lithium or titanium that you want to mine. Personally, I just get all that from the research research nodes that I just continuously research and get lithium and titanium, but hopefully the drill head will be more useful as time progresses in, in the development time. The next object is the winch. Now the winch I found very useful, especially on my exotic base or exotic planet base, because when I landed, there were just trees everywhere. And I really wanted to clear the space so that I can, you know, build a really nice space and keep it nice and organized and everything like that. So if you dig out an object like this tree here, and then you go over and then you click on the harpoon portion of the winch, you just kind of click on the neck of it. You'll then be able to click on the object that you want to pull, jump back into your vehicle, and away you go. You can move the object to wherever you want to, you want to move it. If you try to go too fast, it will disconnect. Let's give that another try. If the object's too heavy as well, it will disconnect. I think I tried uh, moving one of those wrecks. I wanted it to be my little shelter from storms, but I wasn't able to move it. So as you can see now, I'm moving that. Well, apparently when the thing spins like that, it disconnects. But as you can see, you can move trees, you can move rocks. Uh, you can actually even move the uh, satellite rack. So if you wanted one of those near your base, you can bring it on over and decorate your base area. The truck and the spaceship can both be built at the vehicle base. Now, basically what these two objects are, two, the two vehicles are, 
uh, they're basically doubling the amount of double posts that you get from the base model of both of these technologies. So uh, the base for the truck is the Rover, which only has two double posts. And then the shuttle also has two double posts. So creating these larger ones ob obviously gives you a lot more space to do things. So I was able to add some storage as well as double storage. I can put a, a habitat on there as well as the chair for my character. For the trucks, you can do all sorts of things. You can put some storage on there. You can put a crane on there. Uh, you can also make it fully fully self-sustaining like, like I have with this truck. So I've got a battery as well as a solar panel on there. And it has room for, um, looks like, uh, four or five, five uh, research nodes. So research node takes uh, double posts as well. It can be attached to the front and back of this truck. So um, if these nodes weren't here, let me see if I can get rid of these. There we go. Means I'd have uh, three double posts on the top and then two in the front and back. So five total. So building these larger vehicles is really useful for when you want to truck stuff around as well as getting yourself in a position where you can build a, a whole base with just one flight. The last two technologies are the storage module as well as the crane. Now the storage module is great and you'll probably, you'll see it on all my vehicles. You basically take two double posts and you can add the storage module on top to make it four double posts, which adds a lot more space onto your vehicles. For instance, I have put a storage module on my spaceship here, which allows me to have 32 single post slots here so that I can carry a whole bunch of resources with me when I want to go colonize another planet. I always put this on my trucks too, which allows them to be completely automated, uh, which allows me to put a solar panel and a battery on here. So I don't need to hook it up to like a huge solar panel that's out in the wilderness. So the storage modules are very strong, very, very strong and uh, very useful for each of your vehicles. Now the crane, I haven't found a really good use for the crane yet. And um, the only use I've been able to find for it is with using the drill head. And even then, it's pretty limited if you're playing single player. But I'd imagine it'd be kind of fun with uh, two players. One person driving, the other person getting to the crane. To get into the crane, all you have to do is go to the back of your vehicle and wait for the icon to pop up. Jump inside, and basically, this crane is going to follow wherever you point it with the mouse pointer. Which makes for some pretty precision mining. But overall, though, this is still a lot slower than if you were to use your basic tool for digging, as well as a lot less precise uh, if you were trying to, like, dig a hole in, a, like, a tunnel or something like that. But if, if you had uh, resource nodes like lithium and titanium, you can easily go and specifically point out what you wanted to collect, collect it, and then move on. So the crane, I have a feeling, will be a lot more useful in the later stages of development. But as it stands right now, I think the only thing I have, only things I've been able to connect to it are the um, the drill head as well as the winch. All right, that's all of the technology that you can currently unlock in this current release build of Astroneer. If you have any questions at all about this game or any of the other games I support, please go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. All right, folks, this is Johnny Onos, and I'll catch you in the next episode.